If you're looking for a tax software that has affordable prices, but still gives you a friendly user interface, then you might consider TaxSlayer. In 2023, TaxSlayer continues to improve navigation interface and makes it a little bit more affordable to file your taxes. We will be going through a complete walkthrough in this video. Hey guys, it's Justine with the College Investor, investing in personal finance for millennials. Today we are talking about Tax Slayer and whether or not this might be a useful tool for you to file your 2022 taxes. The first question you might be asking, is Tax Slayer really free? So for 2023, they actually offer a tier called Simply Free. It is very, very simple. It actually really only applies to very simple filers, somebody who might have just a W-2 income or unemployment income, and that's it. There's no credits, no deductions, nothing else that you can take within the simply free tier. So in other tax software that charges a premium, such as TurboTax or H&R Block, you can take that earned income credit or the child tax credit. And for Tax Slayer, this simply isn't the case. Those aren't even included. However, if you're just reporting income, no other deductions, the federal and state filings are free, which is not true for a lot of tax software that we've seen. But a perk to some of their pricing is that if you are a military member, your federal return is free regardless of what credits or deductions that you take. You will have to pay for the state filing, but I think this is a really good value for military service men and women who might wanna take advantage of a free tax software no matter what their credits and deductions are. Just remember, you will have to pay for that state filing. In fact, let's go ahead and hop into their pricing options and see exactly how much this all costs. Okay, so as I mentioned, the Simply Free includes the federal and the state return, so that's zero dollars. A lot of people are most likely going to be bumped up into this classic version, so all forms, deductions, and credits, best value for any tax situation, and that's $29.95, and your state is an additional $39.95. If you want to upgrade to ask a tax pro questions and do a live chat, skip the line phone and email support, that is $49.95. And if you're self-employed, you run your own business, you have business income and expenses or Schedule C that you need to report, that's $59.95. This is significantly lower than premium tax software such as TurboTax or H&R Block. These prices are literally half of what they charge. Also, I kept this window open up at the top, but if you are a Rakuten user, you can get 5% cash back on your purchase through Tax Slayer. So that's an additional discount that you might consider if you are looking for bargain software, but also has some premium features. So what's new in 2023 for TaxSlayer? So one thing that's really nice about TaxSlayer is that they continue to improve their navigation and the user experience inside of the software without overcharging these premium prices that you might see with the premium tax software. They've also added guided navigation wizards and they give users the ability to upload CSV files directly into the tax software to kind of help with that process. While they don't have the integrations directly with employers or companies to help you kind of streamline and download tax data directly into the software, it does give you the opportunity to directly add in those tax forms with a little bit of guidance. In fact, we've named TaxLayer the best budget tax software for landlords and small business owners because they help you with some of those net income tax calculations directly inside of the software. Let's go ahead and hop into TaxSlayer and we'll do a complete walkthrough of what this looks like on the inside. Once you make your own account, you will be greeted inside of the dashboard. I already entered in some information just so we could walk through this a little bit faster, but you'll see here that we'll continue the 2022 tax return, or in your case, get started. Okay. Right away, they have these little icons on the left-hand menu. What I don't like about this is that if you hover over it, it doesn't, oh, here it goes, 
federal health insurance state. So it kind of doesn't give you enough information. I wish, I almost wish there was text right there to tell you exactly what those icons are. But you're gonna start with your basic information. You're going to go through that, add in your name, address, all that good stuff, whether or not you have a spouse, add in their information, and then click continue. And then what's really cool about TaxSlayer is they really give you two options to file your return. You can either be guided by answering questions about your tax situation, or you can select your forms from a list. So what's cool about this is that you can enter in those forms, search for those forms, and then add it. If you had a stack of tax forms that you received from your employer or for, from different financial companies that you needed to report, you could just search for those forms using TaxSlayer and then kind of bypass the whole Q&A navigation where it's literally going to take you through every single section. So really it's like pick your own experience <laughs> with inside of TaxSlayer. So I do like that it kind of gives you different options of how to use the tax software. So if I was to select the guided navigation, then I could say, do you have any W-2s to enter? I could say yes. And then we'll see here, I put in Bob's information, Vance Refrigeration, and then we could add another W-2 statement. And here's where you're gonna have to manually type in that EIN number in order to get that W-2 processed and put together. All right, so if I was to go through the W-2, you can see here that it put in all of your information here. And I don't know if you caught that over on the bottom right-hand corner. Let me do this, 11,000, Oh, I think it was Social Security that flagged this. Okay, your Social Security withholdings appear to be too large. Generally, your Social Security withholdings should not be larger than 6.2% of the amount in box three. So I thought it was really interesting that they had that little flag there. This is just fake information that I'm putting in here for the sake of this demonstration. But if you were to ever see something like that, I'm really, I'm really glad that the software actually flagged that. And as I change that social security withholding, you'll see my federal refund summary actually changed and reduced to $750. You always wanna make sure that you don't get a very large refund in back in your federal return because it means you paid, you overpaid in taxes. And you also wanna make sure that you don't owe too much. So getting as close to zero as possible is really uh, the best that you can do for your tax situation. Of course, consult with a CPA or a tax professional, but I think that is the best way to handle your taxes. All right, prior year state and local refunds. Did you receive a state or local tax refund for the tax year? No. Interest and dividend income. Did you have any interest or dividend income? Yes. Okay, so here's the little menu for interest and dividend income. If you earned any dividend, interest or dividend income from bank, brokerage firm, or some other financial institution, this is where you could click begin and then add in these Schedule Bs. So I've already added in interest income from Ally Bank and dividend income from Betterment. And so if I was to click on those and click edit, all I simply did was go through these interest income forms, the 1099 INT form, and then added manually what was listed on that form and adding in that interest income. Scrolling down to the bottom, and you can you see the option there, it said save and add another. So you can always add in multiple interest income or dividend income forms. So I did the exact same thing with dividend and click continue. And then if you had any of these situations here, you could also click begin. So I do like that this is really clean, simple to go through and the guided actually is really nice because it's just simple yes or no questions and then you can click through it. Deferred retirement income, no. 
Social Security and Railroad Retirement Benefits, no. Miscellaneous Income, no. No. So if you were kind of unclear about your tax return or what all you needed to report, you might find this guidance a little bit more, it might put your mind at ease knowing that you've covered all of your bases, you've checked every box, you've gone through it all so that you know you're not missing anything. No additional income to enter. So we're still on the income section. Okay, now we're on to deductions. What I would say TaxLayer could improve upon is that they could actually have this cut out in different sections that says, here's where we're talking about income, here's where you're talking about deductions, credits, and so forth. They really don't show me exactly where I'm at in my return. So if that mattered to you, then you might want to pick something else. So if I was to select my own forms, I could go through these deductions and then figure out which one I had. So if I had adjustments to income, such as the health savings account form, then I could go in there and then add that form and put it in here and show, okay, this is the 1099 SA distributions for my health savings account. Click continue, and let's say that's all I had. So deductions are done. Now we're into other tax situations. So if I had any of these other taxes, self-employment tax, this is where you would begin on those forms and then add that to this particular section. Payments and estimates. Other withholding state estimated tax payments. These are some of those calculators that we talked about that if you were a landlord or a small business owner, then you might you might find this really helpful. Continue. Miscellaneous tax forms. I don't know, I really appreciate this. For 60 bucks on the self-employed as the most expensive tier, I'd say this is a really good deal. Okay, COVID-19 relief. If you needed to do the recovery rebate credit, you did not receive or receive the wrong amount, you could get, you could qualify for that third stimulus payment. The advanced child tax credit, it's really nice. Let's click continue. And now as you get through all of those different sections, and you're gonna see uh, some questions about the Affordable Care Act, getting the health insurance on the marketplace, and then I'm prompted with the state return being unavailable because it's, it's too early for me to actually <laughs> file um, the federal and the state return, but I can go back, you could, front load this information now, and then when you're ready to file, when that opens up officially, then it's all ready to go. So now they're just doing a quick review and then the tax return summary of everything that I've put in here thus far. So if I was to have any questions on my income section or I felt like I missed something, I could go back in and click on one of these links to add in that information. Same goes with uh, taxes and credits you know, looking for any of these deductions here too. If I click continue. Okay, and then again, with the e-filing not yet available, can go ahead and come back into the tax software when you are ready to file. And that's a look inside of TaxLayer. So is TaxSlayer actually worth it? Going through the interface, I really liked that you could pick and choose your experience, whether you could just quickly search for the forms that you already had or be guided through the entire process and all of the subsections of your tax return. I also like that the Tax Pro Assist and that feature is included in the premium option. For this price point, knowing that $60 was their most expensive tier, if you had to report business or self-employment income, I really think this is a good value for what you get on the inside. Also, if you just stick with their classic level option, all of the forms are supported inside of that classic option. So you don't even need to bump up to premium or self-employed to get those specific forms. 
So if you aren't wanting to pay the premium prices like TurboTax and H&R Block, but you still want an easy to use interface that is going to help you through your tax forms or also give you access to that tax pro assistant using the premium or self-employed features, then I think TaxLayer is a really great bargain for your money. Don't forget, we have complete walkthroughs and reviews of all the latest tax software available to you at thecollegeinvestor.com. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up so we can help out more tax filers this year and we'll catch you in the next video.